Hi everyone. So today's conversation will be on the checkpoint anti-malware policy and we'll be going over the options that are available and then on a future video we'll show you the actual product in work on a machine. Uh, the anti-malware policy has a couple of options here for you. It has a connected and a disconnected state policy. And the difference, as you can probably read here on the screen, is this policy is enforced when the device is connected and talking to the management server. And this particular policy here, disconnected, would be enforced when the box is not able to communicate or connect to the endpoint management server. So a device can have two separate policies depending on how you want to manage them. Okay? But the policies for anti-malware are pretty straightforward. Uh, scan all files upon access. You can come in here and um, exclude certain files from processes. So if you have any internal uh, applications that may be in conflict, it's definitely a good idea to go ahead and list them into the here. Uh, detect unusual activity. Um, how often do you want us to look at the crowd, cloud reputational processes? Uh, do you want to enable any level of web protection? And then of course, uh, scan email message or scan messages. So you have some options that are available to you as well. Uh, but the main thing in here is really the exclusion of it to ensure that we're not going to theoretically break anything that we're not aware of, especially internally or homegrown applications using a particular process. Uh, signature updates. How often do you want to do signature updates? Of course, you can change two and four of the defaults, but you can create a new one here and add your own if you want to be a little bit more aggressive or less aggressive. Uh, what is the source? So if your endpoint manager is the one that's getting the updates, you can go ahead and have the agents pull from there. And if that fails, you can set up an external one. So those devices that are, you know, laptops that are traveling, if they can't talk to the local endpoint servers, they can reach out to the checkpoint signature servers and grab them from there as well. So you've, have, you've got some definite options that are available for you. And then, of course, if the second attempt fails, you can list some external resources. But if these two fail, you probably have something else going on that you may want to troubleshoot or with the device or the agent itself. And then of course scans, determining when the scans are again running. You can take the defaults or create your own uh, scanning periods, daily, monthly, weekly, day of the week. Uh, if you're going to do weekly, it becomes active. If you're going to do daily, it becomes uh, active as start as the start time. So you've got some options depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, run scan after malware blade installation. So in case you throw the installation of the blade out there, do you want it to do that preemptive scan? Allow the user to delete the scan and then uh, prohibit scans, uh, cancel if it's been more than 30 days or whatever you determine as far as the options. If you give them the option to cancel, set that time of, okay, it's been 30 days, you can't cancel the scan, it's happening, or it's been 10 days or five days or whatever it might be, so you can, if you just shoot, take that option away, you don't need to worry about it. The scans are gonna happen based on your time frame. So some options that are available. What drives to potentially scan? Again, critical areas, optical, local, mail messages, network drives, unauthorized or unrecognized devices or removal devices. Um, what are we looking to target from a scan perspective? You can kind of uh, outline those here. Skip archives or non-executables and don't scan files larger than XYZ in, in uh, size, in megabits. And then here you can also configure files and folders for um, exclusion. So you can decide on which ways or which files or which um, extensions should be excluded from um, the scans. Again, whitelisting some problematic or homegrown applications may be problematic. Get them uh, white, blacklisted or whitelisted depending on how you want to do it. And let us go ahead and exclude those. Uh, optimize the scans so that way we can go ahead and uh, perform scan optimizations, probably lower than other running apps. If you wanted to go ahead and give the scan a lower priority than other things, we can definitely do that as well. But we will try to optimize and minimize the impact on the endpoints with our scans. And then here, what, what happens if we do find something? What are we going to do in regards to quarantine? Quarantine files, if it, cure failed, delete file if cure failed, and then risk where treat as malware or skip the file. And then you have some other options here, exclude infections by name. So if you know, again, anything that is a test scenario or some sort of 
uh, virus name, we can exclude those in here. For some, if for some reason you need to exclude them out, we can definitely do that. Or again, a homegrown uh, file that is behaving in a way that we determine that it is potentially an infection, we can exclude those. And then if you want to, you can configure um, sharing your information with our thread cloud. Um, so that way we're not only receiving information from other users, but also contributing back to the community as well. So that way we can go ahead and you know, add them. So that way everyone leveraging the database can, be, uh, can benefit from it. So very simple um, setups in regards to scans. AV and anti-malware is pretty straightforward, nothing too dramatic to do. And you can see here that I've got one connected rule um, listed here. But I could all, if I had a disconnected rule, it'd be another section here. So I'd have a connected, a disconnected, and then the default org, which is the one you're looking at here. So AV is probably one of the more simpler options to set up in the solution, but it's definitely something you want to spend a little bit of time on, especially if you have some exceptions that you want to add into here to ensure that we don't uh, cause any potential issues with safe apps that have been detected as malicious. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.